Hello, friends, and welcome to Friends in Fiction, four New York Times bestselling authors, endless stories. I'm Christy Woodson Harvey. And I'm Kristen Harmel. And on behalf of all four Friends in Fiction hosts, including Mary Kay Andrews and Patty Callahan Henry, Christy and I are excited to welcome you to a special episode of Friends in Fiction Behind the Book, a quicker, deep dive into the life and work of one of our favorite authors. We are so excited to welcome to the screen today a Friends in Fiction favorite who really needs no introduction. <laughs> you all know her, Zibby Owens, but just in case you've been living under a rock, um, <laughs> Zibby is the creator and host of the award-winning daily podcast, Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. Zibby is also the founder and CEO of Zibby Media, dubbed the Zibbyverse by the LA Times. <laughs> It includes publishing house Zibby Books, online magazine Zibby Mag, Zibby's Book Club, retreats, classes, and events. And I get to go to one of her treat retreats in April, so I'm very excited. Ooh, jealous. Yeah. Um, she owns Zibby's Bookshop, an independent bookstore in Santa Monica, California. A regular contributor to Good Morning America and other outlets, she loves recommending books as New York City's most powerful book fluencer. That's a pretty good title. I like that. <laughs> that is awesome. And now... Yeah. I'm wondering, Christy, how do we establish a Christiverse? Like, Ooh, you know, right. you, the yeah, Christiverse. I the like Christiverse. that. We exactly, share it. it's all yeah. encompassing. It. Yeah, exactly. Should we ask exactly. Christy Morris to be in it with us, though. You Obviously, think? you um, <laughs> you have a friends and fiction verse already. It is wide, far. Yeah, but we want more Zibby. We want more Zibby. Is that too much to ask? I get it. I get it. <laughs> so Zibby is the author of Bookends, a memoir of love, loss, and literature and the children's book, Princess Charming. She's also the editor of two anthologies, Moms Don't Have Time to Have Kids, a timeless anthology, and Moms Don't Have Time to, uh, Moms Don't Have Time to, a quarantine anthology, sorry. Um, a graduate of Yale University and Harvard Business School, Zibby currently lives in New York with frequent visits to LA with her husband, Kyle Owens of Morning Moon Productions, and her four children who range in age from, is it nine to 16, Zibby? It oh is. my goodness, oh my gosh, that you are a busy woman. Yeah. So follow, you can follow Zibby on Instagram at Zibby Owens and on Substack where she tells it like it is. Yes. Oh my gosh. Your Substack is awesome. I always love seeing it. All right. Well, first of all, huge congratulations because this just doesn't seem like it could be possible because <laughs> you are such a part of the book world now, but everyone knows about your amazing podcast and your publishing company, your anthologies and your memoir and on and on. But this is a really big moment for you. And I think that we need to pause and recognize this <laughs> because blank is your debut novel and that's a big deal. So how does it feel to be crossing the finish line? When you said that, I have goosebumps like all up and down my arms. Uh, it is a big deal. I am so excited. Really, really excited. I have been trying to get a novel out into the world since I was probably nine years old or so. And I decided I would be like the youngest novelist ever. Meanwhile, <laughs> I'm 47 and my novel is just coming out. So it took me a bit of time. But yeah, I am so excited. I'm just, I'm just so excited. And the freedom that comes with writing a novel and you can say whatever you want versus the memoir, it's just like so fun. The whole thing about – it's all just so fun. I love that. So, Zibby, you've been pretty candid about the fact that it was a long road to getting this first novel novel published, and now we know it was from age nine on. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about that journey for you? Sure. Well, I knew I wanted to be a writer from a very young age, and I quickly realized that there was no quick path to getting there. Mm -hmm. I thought okay, I told colleges, like, this is what I want to do. I started writing for magazines when I was 14. Like, I knew it. But I interned at Vanity Fair my first summer of college, and I was like, oh, so there is no path. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'll start here, you know, ferrying around fashion outfits or whatever, and then I'll work my way up. But the the contributors to Vanity Fair did not come from working their way up. They were these big deal people. Anyway, I quickly realized that if I wanted to be – an author, a writer, I would have to go about it a different way and pursue other interests. And I have like a million interests, so that's fine. But that I couldn't become the greatest American novelist at age 22, like I had planned. So I worked in marketing. I love starting things up as well. I have, I do have like a entrepreneurial you didn't know that. spirit. No, we have not noticed to be. Have you started anything? You, you hide that really well. It's a, it's a real subtlety to your personality. <laughs> 
yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's a problem. It's a problem. <laughs> I have like a whole list of like ideas of what I want to do and they don't make any sense. Like none of that. Luckily, I now have like a team who's like, okay, that's great. Just put it on the list. This doesn't make any sense. You know. um, Buy the domain name, but we're not doing it right now. That's right. I have actually divested many domain names since we last oh, talked about this. I'm I realized – yeah, this was like a major expense uh, yeah. that I was paying a recurring fee for every domain name I owned, and I owned like hundreds. And I was so oh I cut that goodness. out, and now I yeah, now I can be a publisher. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, but uh, I never let go of this dream, even though I went to business school and did all this stuff. And during business school, I lost my best friend on nine yeah. eleven, and I realized like life is short. Forget it. I'm not, you know, I know there might not be a path, but now's the time. And I took a year off to write a novel and I wrote it as a memoir and a novel. And I wrote like 10 a million drafts, like everybody does for every book and tried to sell it. And I was convinced it would sell. And I told everyone I knew that I was writing this book. And because I had written for the business school paper, everyone knew I love to write and blah, blah, blah. And then it didn't sell. And I had, I did get an agent. So that was nice. Well, I don't know what, what's worse, actually. We could have this debate. But I did have an agent. They did send it out, and it then got rejected everywhere. And I was devastated. I felt, like, publicly humiliated. I did. I thought I did all the things. Mm -hmm. So where was the payoff? Like, I, mm -hmm. anyway, I was so embarrassed. And I didn't try. I did, then I ghost wrote a book with, for my agent, which was which was good. And then I ended up having kids. So I stayed home with them for 11 years. Uh, but I was always writing on the side. And I felt so burned by that failure that I didn't try to write a novel again for like a decade, I get maybe it. more. And it wasn't until I got divorced and I had more time to remember even my name, let alone the fact that I could I, – I, I don't know, Christy. Like you do all this. And like I have these weekends where I don't have the kids where I can – remember who I am. But anyway, um, I used that time to start writing again. And then again, I had novels rejected. So <laughs> you would think that I would be like, maybe I'm not a good writer. But I didn't think that. I was like, I know I'm a better writer than some people. Like other yeah. people write novels. Like if other people can write them, why can't I do it? Like I have to find yeah. the right idea and I just have to keep going. And so I just keep, kept going. And I didn't lose total hope, but I did have so many just like crying on the bathroom floor setbacks that I was like, I know I can do it, but I might just not have the opportunity to do it. And it might not happen for me. And I have to just live with that. So that's where I got. Well, we're glad you, perse you persevered. And that's such a good Absolutely. story for everybody out there listening and a good it reminder is. for us. <laughs> because, you know, it doesn't even matter. I mean, you can be doing this for a really long time and you can still have those huge setbacks and those crying on the floor yep. bathroom moments. I mean, I, gosh, I mean, Kristen Hanna was on last week talking about this great book idea that she researched for a million years, wrote, turned in, and her editor was like, no. Nah. Yeah. I mean, it was like a little while ago, but she's Kristen Hanna. Like what? You know, it just was a reminder that like, okay, like even like the greats like have these moments where it just kind of falls apart and doesn't work out. Okay. Well, I just started the book and I absolutely love it. And so let's get into the good stuff. Tell us about it. Tell our readers about this amazing book. Yes. Well, when I got to this point of here it is like now or never again, I finally decided like, I'm not going to try to be a literary author. I'm not going to try to write in a style I think is going to sell. Like, forget it. I'm just going to write the way I think and talk. And I'm going to make myself laugh. And I'm just going to – I'm not going to try to write like a prose poem, which actually was one of my drafts, was like this very you – know, even though I like to read that, I also – I like to read everything. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. And so it is about a mom – and an author who cannot think of the next idea for her book, even though her first book was a big success. And she had gotten pretty far down the way with a novel and then realized that, like, the biggest deal author in the country, like, went on the equivalent of GMA and, like, had the same idea. And she's like, oh, my gosh, and she has to throw it away. So it's really about what her – the on the publishing side of things, it's about how she decided to hand her book in blank to meet her deadline because <laughs> – of what to write and 
she thought, oh, that's so genius. This will be a referendum on the publishing industry and it'll show that you can be a bestseller and it doesn't even matter what you write so much so that you don't even have to have words. So she thought that was funny. Of course, her agent doesn't find that funny and like, <laughs> the whole, it splits the whole publishing world into, including her friends. And as that part of her life is blowing up, all these other parts of her life are blowing up too. She has issues with her teenage daughter and her bar mitzvah age son who's like going through all of that at the same time and her husband and her three girlfriends. So it's really about finding her voice, realizing who she is, what she wants to say. And on the side, there's a little bit about publishing. I love that. Ooh, I love that. Well, Zibi, I'm curious, since it's a publishing world novel, are there pieces of you and of your own life that made it into this book? Indeed, there are. Yeah. <laughs> It's so funny. I started reading it to my kids the other day, and I was like, "Do you guys just even want to hear like the first page?" They were they were kind of like, "No," but I was like, well, "I'm going to read it to you anyway." Three, at least three of them were there, and so I started reading, and all of a sudden, my younger daughter was like, "You didn't tell us it was about us." Oh, oh no! <laughs> um, so it's not really about them, but I did kind of blend the four of their personalities into this composite two characters, and then I made oh. some stuff up, of course, because once I got going, they took on a life of their own, but. Yeah. Yeah, there are a lot. You know, my daughter's water bottle and how it doesn't fit in the cup holder. Like, why do they make? Right. I, I agree. I think it's daily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of how I deal with the kids and just the pain of getting out the door in the morning and, um, you know, the, just poking fun at the craziness of sort of being a mom and the things yeah. the kids say. So there is there is a bunch of me, maybe not exactly what I say and do, but I would imagine I could say and do that. And I am not my character, Pippa. She is a different, she is different from me in, in some notable ways. Uh, but the spirit definitely, and it came out of my head. Like, I don't know how people right. write characters of nothing yes. in common. Like, you know, right. it, I'm writing the first person from, um, I don't know. So yes, there are, par are parts of me in it. Absolutely. My husband and my son always say that there are like, things that they don't even think I recognize that are yeah. like or them or like our friends or something that happened or and I do think that's it's just part of it when it's coming out of your head you know I I still remember a review for my first book it was a bad review that um was one of the trade reviews 20 years ago for how to my first book how to sleep with a movie star that said if this not if this novel were a person it would be nervously tucking its hair behind its ears. Um, I, I still remember that tw from 20 years ago. And that's so me. I, like, that is like, yeah, really? Um, but yes, like we do. We, we we put ourselves into books in ways that like is so obvious to other people, but sometimes it's hard to recognize ourselves. Very true. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Well, Zibi, we are going to let you go. But before we do, we have a lot of writers out there in our world, as you know. Do you have a writing tip that you can share or or maybe not even a writing tip, maybe a publishing tip, just mm -hmm. some piece of advice for those of us on this journey? <laughs> um, a writing tip I would give is I like to think of things in scenes. So rather than like set a word count, it's like I'm going to write the scene where she goes to you know the school pickup line or something. So I like to think of it in terms of scenes because it feels easier for me to you know, bite off than, yeah. and chew than the whole thing. Um, and in terms of publishing, uh, I, my main advice there is wait until you have the absolute best draft that you have before you submit to a publisher. Like if you want to submit something that's like, you think it's really good, but it hasn't been vetted by anybody except for like your, your one best friend, like yeah. that's when you should go to an agent mm -hmm. and an editor, but just wait, wait. I made this mistake myself. I was like, it's good enough. I'm not even going to prove it. You know, so wait, you don't know. You know, you know that expression like you only get one shot to make a first yeah. impression. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would say, really polish it up before you submit. Yeah, I get a lot of people that reach out to me. I don't know if you guys do too. That'll be like, well, I have this first draft, and I think I'm just going to go ahead and send it in because I feel like once I get an editor, they'll fix. And I'm like, oh no, 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 no. Yeah, no, it does no, not no, work no, that no. way anymore. No, <laughs> you're, you're, you're selling to them. You're selling to them. This is. Yeah, yeah. especially coming in cold, you know, with the first yeah. book. With, with, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, Zibby, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. you were such a wonderful guest. And um, we love being able to tell our whole community about this great book. Oh, thank you yeah, for the support. So Honestly, I cannot explain how much it means to me. So thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank well, you. We're so you. excited to be able to celebrate with you. And you guys, don't forget to get your copy of Blank. It's available from our bookshop.org, Friends and Fiction Shop, and wherever you buy your books. So 
make sure that you grab your copy. And um, all of you out there also, don't forget to tune in every Wednesday night here on Facebook or YouTube for brand new longer form content about the books, authors, and reading and writing worlds. You can find everything about the Friends of Fiction universe. The Friends of Fiction universe, look at us. It's right in our I'm screen. Telling you. I'm telling you. Look at you. But I, I'm still lobbying for the Christoverse at some point. Yeah, and the sad part is, is like Vulture said it about her. We just wrote it <laughs> about <up>. ourselves. <laughs> Okay. Um, from the live yeah. show to the podcast, the newsletter to events, information about how to purchase our guest books to updates from the Friends of Fiction official book club on our website, friendsandfiction.com. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.